Hi, my name is John Savile, and in this video, I want to talk about the new Burstable or B series virtual machines in Azure. But before I do that, just kind of a step back, and in Azure today, we have a whole different set of series of virtual machines. If I go and look, for example, at the sizes for Windows VMs, this applies to Linux as well, there's a whole set of VMs around general purpose. VMs with variable amounts of memory and CPU and network and storage capabilities. They were compute optimized, a higher CPU to memory ratio set of virtual machines. There's memory optimized, a higher set of memory to CPU ratio virtual machines. There's ones that are optimized around storage. The ones with GPU, um, NVIDIA CUDA cards for computational and visualization capabilities. There's high performance compute. These have RDMA network adapters and get these massive amounts of bandwidth between those virtual machines. But one of the things really all of these have in common, they come in different sizes, amount of CPUs, memory, etc., is that I get the entire virtual CPU for all of the time. And this is measured in something called Azure Compute Units. So if I think about an A1 is kind of the baseline 100, and then the different ones have different CPU capabilities, their performance. As I go up, for example, the D series, well, that's 160. The DV2, 210 to 250, you can use the Intel Turbo technology to boost up on occasion. And the DV3, 160 to 190. Why did it go down? Uh, because the V3s introduced hyper-threading capabilities. So now I'm actually using those hyper-threads uh, within my virtual machine. But for all of these virtual machines, and it shows you the virtual CPU to actual core ratios, I get 100% of that virtual CPU all of the time. And that's fantastic, I always have that available. But do I always need it? If I think back to original one of the benefits of virtualization, and there, was, there was a lot of benefits, but one of them was, often I'd have a workload that didn't really need that much CPU all of the time. Maybe it ran at 10% CPU, and there'd be the occasional storm of traffic where I needed more CPU. So what I would do is I had my virtualization host, it had a certain number of cores, maybe they were hyper-threaded, so that translated to logical processors, and I could have virtual CPUs for a VM, and I would overcommit. I would have more virtual CPUs assigned over all the VMs on the box than phys physical logical processors actually were there. Because my really my guidance was they're not all going to run at 100% all of the time. I could have maybe five virtual CPUs mapped to one logical proc, because on average they only run 15%, so that still gives me some spare time. If there were bursts, well, I would have various analysis to make sure they burst at different times. They could share that processor. And in Azure, you're not doing that today. You get that entire, and you're paying for that entire virtual CPU all of the time. And that's really where the B series comes in. But before I talk about the B series, I want to talk about cell phone plans. And in particular, there's a certain type of plan where I get rollover minutes. And I can think about that cell phone plan that really maybe I get on average 10 minutes a day. So if I think about uh, my minutes, every day they give me 10 more minutes that I can talk on the phone. So I can think about, yeah, every day they're adding 10 minutes to how much I can talk. So if I spoke actually for 10 minutes every day, then I'm just constantly talking. So every day they're adding 10 and I'm using 10. So if I think about any gain that I can accumulate, there would be no gain. I'd always just be sitting at zero. My net net is zero. There's no delta between what I'm being given 10 minutes a day and how much I'm talking, 10 minutes a day. However, if I was only speaking for five minutes a day, so I started talking less, what would happen is, all those minutes, I'd actually start to get, if I think about uh, accumulation, five minutes a day bonus. So if each of these is a day, over time, I would start to accrue extra minutes. And where that's useful is, well, maybe one day I've got some exciting news. I want to phone a whole bunch of people. So I want to talk for more minutes 
Well, guess what? I've got them available. I can start to dig into those spare minutes that I've accumulated. And then sure, that balance I've built up would obviously start to decrease as I'm doing all that talking on that particular day. And I can roll those over. And that is a maximum number of minutes cell phone plans will let me roll over. But the point is, there's an assumed a base usage which is less than some 100 minutes a day. And if I use less than what I'm given each day, I start to build up a series of credits of talk time. So then on other days I could burst and use that. And really, this is exactly what's happening with the B-series. If I go and look at the B-series virtual machines, so let's jump back and look at the general purpose, and then look at the B-series, what you can actually see is there's a number of different B-series virtual machines. There's one with one virtual CPU, and it's based around a base performance of 10% of the core. There's another one with one virtual CPU, but it's based around 20% use of the core. There's ones where I have eight virtual CPUs and it's based around 135% of the core. So this percentage is of one virtual CPU. So where it says 10%, that's 10% of a virtual CPU. Where it's 135% of the base, that's saying 135% of one virtual CPU. Well, I have eight virtual CPUs. So the point of this would be that Back to my kind of cell phone plan, let's take the very, very simple example where I get 10% of a virtual CPU. Essentially, every minute, I'm getting 0.1 of a credit. If I think about one of credit is 100% of a virtual CPU for one minute. So every minute, I'm being given 0.1 for that particular virtual machine of a credit. So back to my sort of over time and the amount of CPU I'm using, if I was running at a flat 10% of my single virtual CPU utilization, my net credit gain would always be zero because I'm getting 10% of a core virtual CPU and I'm using 10% of virtual CPU. So net, net, nothing. So if I'm up here at 10%, I'm not gaining anything. But if my average CPU utilization was actually less, if my average CPU was only 5% and I'm just sitting here flat, well then every minute I would accumulate 0.05 of a credit. So over 10 minutes, I would accumulate half a credit. After an hour, I would accumulate three credits. So my credit accumula accumulation would start to rise. So I'm gaining credits. And the point of that is, well, normally I'm running fairly low, let's say 5%. Maybe I'm a domain controller, and suddenly there's a boot storm. And over time, maybe I've accumulated 10, 20, 30 credits. So for a period of time, I can actually burst up, assuming my credit's higher, and I could run at 100% for a period of time. I have some boot storm for a few minutes, and then sure, it drops back down again. So that accumulation, assuming my accumulation was all the way up here, so it's very high, when it's gonna drop as I'm consuming all of that, drop a bit slower, and then it will start accumulating again. And that's the point of the B-series. The point of the B-series is it assumes I don't need 100%. I don't wanna pay. So the B-series is a lot cheaper than the other series of virtual machines, because it's based around, hey, I'm just using this smaller percentage of the CPU. But when I need it, if I'm using less than that allocation at 10%, 20%, 40%, 135%, I'm building those credits. And then when I have that boot storm, that big workload, well, I can consume those credits that I've built up so I can use more than that base performance. And it tells you how many credits you can accumulate. So for example, if I've just got one virtual CPU at 10%, I can bank 144. If I have eight virtual CPUs, and remember my base performance is 135%, that's basically assuming whatever 135 divided by eight would be, that's roughly what I could consume on an ongoing basis. It's kind of 15% basically. So it's assuming all of the CPUs baseline run at 15%. 
if on average they're running less than that, I'll start to bank credits and I can bank up to 1,944 and then consume those when I need them. And that's really it. That's all the B series is doing. It's that cell phone rollover plan where, hey, if I'm not talking as much as I'm allowed to talk, I get some credits accumulating. And if I want to talk a whole bunch one day, well, I can consume them. So it's the idea that I do have workloads that ordinarily need a pretty low amount of CPU, but there are times where I need to burst out and use more. This is what this has given me. Now I get visualization into this. If I actually, I've got a B-series virtual machine here. If I go and look at metrics, there's a whole set of metrics available to me. And there's really two that I really care about. So it's just doing a, a sort of update right now on what ones I've got. You can see host, CPU credits consumed, so that's how many I'm using. And then I can see host CPU credits remaining. So what's interesting here, bring this over a bit more, you can see in my example, well, I'm using almost nothing. I'm, I'm really kind of flat here. And so the amount of credits I have remaining is really, really high because I'm just not doing much on this virtual machine. But I have 580 credits remaining, basically. So all that means for me is pretty much, if I needed to, I could run at 100% CPU on a single virtual CPU, if I needed that, for basically 10 hours because it's one credit for 100% virtual CPU for a minute. So I can actually run really busy, a lot of workload for quite a long period of time. Again, if I kind of take off the remaining, I can get a better view of actually what I'm doing. You can see, basically, I'm running at almost nothing. The credits I'm consuming, this VM does nothing. You can see there's the occasional storm, but even my storm, it's really not doing anything. If I look maybe over a longer period of time, let me drop down, which is not in this picture. You see a bit more variation, but really right now, it's not doing very much. So I hope that was useful. Again, the goal of this was just to explain what the B-Series is, how it's different from what we've had in the past. And I hope that shows that it's going to be really, really good where I have those workloads that really don't need much CPU, but may need to burst occasionally. So with this, I can really optimize my spend because they are far cheaper than the ordinary sort of virtual machines. Obviously there's other ways, there's reserved instances, there's hybrid use benefit, there are ways to optimize my Azure spend. But the B-Series I think is a very novel approach to this and it's, it's gonna be useful for a lot of workloads. Thanks very much.